More states are requiring financial education in high school, but most students in the United States don't take a personal finance class. Sharon Epperson visited a small high school in Vermont where they do. And Sharon, what would you find? Well, you know, Becky, I went to a high school last week and I spent the morning with a devoted teacher who is really on a mission. Her high school has about 200 students from many different countries speaking more than 20 different languages. And she is ready to teach personal finance to every one of them. Students at Winooski High School are required to take a personal finance course to learn about money management before they graduate. How to build your credit. Applying for college and loans. How to write a resume or cover letter. You can have some fun with that. Courtney Ponquette is teaching them about earning, saving, and spending. And you're going to have to buy all of the things that you want. We also want to think about how long we have to work to pay for those things. Key steps in budgeting for what they'll need for their first apartment. You're going to have to buy your mattress too. A bill to make a semester-long personal finance course a graduation requirement at all public high schools in Vermont has stalled in the State House. You've been advocating for personal finance to be a standalone class that all high school students have to take in order to graduate. Why do you think that's such an important requirement? I see the impact every single day in my class. So every single day in my class, students are engaged, they're asking questions, they're bringing this information home, they're applying it to their own lives, and they're, they report to me that they're making better financial decisions because of it. And research shows Paquette students are not alone. Professor Carly Urban has studied the outcomes. When personal finance is required in high school, you see improvements in credit scores, you see reductions in delinquency rates, you see fewer payday borrowing choices, you see less reliance on credit cards. In eight states, all high school students are required to take a semester-long personal finance course before graduation. And 10 states are in the process of implementing that requirement. After taking this class, it has helped me to start saving my money and to start investing right now. Students in Winooski say that everyone could benefit from a financial literacy class. Do you all see yourselves as advocates for personal finance now? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I would definitely. think so. It's one of the few classes that no matter what you're going to do, it can apply to your life in some sort of aspect. And it can also help to improve their financial well-being. You know, many polls show that there is popular support for financial education, but many students around the country may not have access to personal finance classes due in part to budget constraints and other curriculum demands. What are some of the other challenges? Because I, it, it is shocking that there aren't these classes, these personal finance classes offered in more schools. Well, I think there is also a lack of teacher training. I mean, some, a lot of adults are not very comfortable with their own personal finance, let alone teaching uh, students about it. So I think that that may be a concern among some school districts and teachers about getting training, but there are nonprofit organizations that can certainly help, like Jumpstart Coalition, the Council for Economic Education, and Next Gen Personal Finance. So there are resources out there to get that teacher training. There are some schools that teach it as a component of another class, maybe social studies or math. Does that work? Does that kind of fill the bill for it? Well, I mean, it's not a guarantee then. So you're not sure that you're going to get that class. And what researchers have found that when it is embedded in a math class or social studies class, then they're not necessarily getting to all the students. There is some inequity in terms of access. There's not yeah, equity guess, there. Not to mention it, that those curriculums are probably pretty full already anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's another concern. So th when that happens, only about 40% of students are actually getting that kind of education. Sharon, thank you very much. Sure. Good to see you. Good to see you too. By the way, CNBC has free resources to learn more about budgeting, saving, and investing. You can sign up for Sharon's eight-week newsletter, Money 101. That's at cnbc.com slash money101.